Builders in the Void A story by user DrunkRobot97 The Greatest Invasion of All Time The humans have invaded Council Space. Not with weapons or ships, mind you, though they appear to be very good at making and using those. No, they invaded with words, ideas, things nobody can defend against. They pulled off the greatest invasion of all time. I should explain who I am. I am a priest of the Church of Hirtal, a religion of my people, the Fromni. I've spent the last 68 Earth years head of a monastery, teaching young Fromni the words of the ancients. My successor I have taught well, and I began my wander. The wander is a custom we try to practice every century or so. Explore all safe space. See and learn that which is new, to avoid losing touch with the now. The ancients were wise, and we must heed their advice. But one day we will be the ancients, and we must learn and write down the now for our descendants. My wander soon brought me out of Fromni space, into the heart of galactic politics, Drasuni. When the council was first set up, the Fromni, one of the founding members, the planet Drasuni was spared from factories and flags to act as neutral ground. It was a beautiful world, a paradise in the vast darkness of the cosmos. It was the cultural heart of the galaxy. So many minds from so many worlds mixing together, an almost required stop for any wander. One word, above all others, was being uttered by people of all races almost as soon as I stepped planetside. Human. I began my time at the monastery a few years after the Council had made contact with the humans, and I had only met a few of them before I began. The suits they wore were bulky and primitive, a young species indeed, but they seemed friendly and kind. Not everyone was as quick to trust as they were, however, and intolerance met them wherever they went. I was hoping by the time I began the wander that the other races were more accepting of them. I was certainly not underwhelmed. My first sight after leaving the spaceport was a human, one of the heavier-built ones, the males, embracing a Remlin woman. During the time before I left, the couple would have been lynched, yet nobody seemed to notice them. The human suit was sleeker, better crafted, more refined than I remembered. That I expected. I did not expect the clothes of the Remlin. Before I left, the fashion amongst Remlin girls were monochromatic long dresses, as I recall, we Fromni have perfect recollection. But this woman was wearing a short skirt down to above the knees with many colors. I expected this to be the latest trend, but I looked around and saw no trend in any group, no matter species or position in society. Variety seemed to be the trend. I'm certainly no expert on fashion, but I never saw anything like this. What caused this cultural shift? I was answered the moment I looked up. Many hollow billboards were dedicated to clothes, fashion. What stuck out was the species modeling in half of the advertisements. Bipeds, mammalian, but not of any I had seen before. They were hairless except for a patch on the top of their heads. Their skin tone ranged from pale to dark brown. It was only later I found out that they were humans, the same species that was walking the pavement of this city, now in much larger numbers. How did they go from discrimination to icons of popular culture so quickly? I visited a bar for a quick meal, and I noticed that the vid player was showing some footage from a sport I'd never seen before. The players were in two teams, floating in a huge space, trying to catch a ball and send it into the other team's net. Obviously, the sport could only be playing in microgravity, but who has the courage to dedicate so much resources and risk so many lives for a sport? I asked the bartender where it was being played, and he answered, Zero-G Stadium, Earth Luna L5. So, the humans had both the latest fashion crazes and pioneered sport in an environment everyone knew would inevitably kill you. I heard made by humans was now shorthand for high build quality, but did everyone trust the lives of their beloved athletes and the abilities of the humans? Eventually, I decided to take a night at a musical performance. The works of the other races were not that surprising or groundbreaking, but the final act was from a human group. When the curtain raised to reveal them, the first thing I noticed was the sheer number of them. 
instead of the standard one or three seven-strong band at most. I counted a hundred to a hundred and twenty humans, in a formation the pamphlet referred to as an orchestra. How can this many individuals working with such differing instruments, some handling objects with strings, some with bronze objects they apparently blew into, most with none apparently singers, but a whole crowd of them, be expected to coordinate in a meaningful tune? What they did was masterful. Instead of degenerating into chaos, the humans worked perfectly in sync with each other, the humans standing in front of them making gestures that they seemed to be able to understand, everyone complimenting the other's work with their own. The sound was overwhelming, but not distressful. It worked flawlessly. It seemed to be the humans' ability to work together to the level of building a pseudo-hive mind, the ability that got them their colonies and space stations, could be applied to music. After the show, I had to find the lead human to compliment him on the music he wrote. He replied, Well, thank you, but I didn't write it myself. A human called Ludwig von Beethoven did. When I asked where this Beethoven was, he gave me the most terrifying answer he could. He isn't anywhere. He's been dead for about 500 years. That, above everything else, tells you how they invaded. Back when they were just beginning to master the power of coal, they were creating music that rivaled the best of the galaxy. Now, they've placed themselves in the hearts and minds of that galaxy, seeping into every nook and cranny they can, and nobody even notices. I don't think even the humans know what they're doing. It's not just ships and machines that everyone is sourcing from the humans. It's their very art Fun fact, Beethoven was almost completely deaf when he wrote it. All right, guys, that is going to do it for this one here today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. You know I appreciate you very greatly. Um, we're going to be doing a few more of these today, probably. I'm just They're short ones, so I'm just going to try to do all of the Builders in the Void thing. And I'll release that for the patrons probably here soon. And everybody else will get one once a month. Sorry, guys. It's just I got a packed fucking schedule with all the Death Worlders and Creature 88 and Beast and Builders in the Void and Chrysalis. And now we're probably going to be doing uh, Last Angel, too, as a collab. So... Lots of fun stuff going on, but man, it is it is getting tight. <laughs> There's a lot of stories I got going at this point. So thank you guys again. I really appreciate you. Like, comment, subscribe. If you'd like to hit that patron button, please do go over there, see some stuff, get some stuff early, get access to things. But uh, I'll talk to you later, guys. Bye, y'all. I love you. I think you're all very special, and you should all be happy and proud of yourselves. Yes, even you. I know you don't feel it, but you should. Seriously. Thank you, guys. Oh, I forgot to ask a question. What is everyone's favorite... Um, ooh, what is everyone's favorite Mexican dish? Me, I love nachos, but I also love quesadillas. Both very good. Not just cheese, though. That's not, that's not good enough. I need, like, loaded fucking nachos, you know? Like, the whole works. Gotta have the guac on the side. Gotta have the salsa on the side. Each chip must individually have beans, beef, or chicken, whatever you're doing. Beans, beef... Uh, a little bit of onion or jalapeno, maybe both. And then uh, I think some onion on there too is really nice. And uh, then cheese on top, you know. And then you melt that. Uh, you put the next layer of chips on. You make each individual chip even good again, you know, even better again. And then you put all that stuff on the side. Maybe a little crema. Oh, yummy. <laughs> and some lime. Oh, fuck yeah. God. I just made nachos like two times in the past like week and a half. Uh, it was very good. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye, y'all. Not sure.